when it came to creating the the biomes uh the different environments the four of them was there anything sort of that you found to be challenging or was it just like pure creative fun go nuts and, and create six pages wide of environment uh yeah what i found what i found the most challenging was the underwater bit out of all of them uh not only for like how that story would go but then how do i have um like w weight and physics and yeah. you know, how has this battle been going on for however long they say in the book um without a winner even though they're right in close proximity to each other and so it wasn't so much that environment i guess that was hard but it was that story that was the hardest and then the environment that i had the hardest time getting across i think uh in, through an image was the snowy mountains because it was white and i was like hey i don't want to be to be too white but i don't want it to be like blue and i don't want it to be green i want it to be like snow like how do you draw snow so that was the hardest one to actually make happen for me yeah well like just thinking about that too um from what knowledge i have and an ability to draw like i'm trying to picture like how would you draw a snowy field that's just like a big white patch yeah and maybe maybe some some white patch on the background because there's snowy sort of incline maybe yeah uh, yeah fantastic i mean i think when when i went through and i read them i really enjoyed seeing the different areas that you created um i thought you did the underwater well by the way when you, okay. you showed characters not to be like you know on the ground but oh there happens to be water like you actually showed them moving through water and, and helped them out with that thanks yeah yeah um and now knowing how you sort of had your 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 background and then move your characters as cells through them it's really cool to see and, and especially how that's impacted the art and I'll, I'll make sure i have images up so that people can understand and have the reference there for how it impacts the look of your book and your style because um, it's i find really unique um and yeah and it's it's the chris barnes style i like it so <laughs> keep keep going thanks yeah i said uh, i showed so uh, my wife's seen some of it she hasn't read the whole book because she's not a super nerd uh, <laughs> like like <laughs> hi <laughs> hi guys hey there. um but um i said to her after i showed her it's like yeah like i finally drawn a book that's worth buying even if you don't know me personally <laughs> I, I, from my own opinion okay because it, it it looks it looks good uh, uh not many artists like to or storytellers or cartoonists like to say that i don't i don't think i i feel like you talk to people and they're like oh thanks like my art's pretty good or <laughs> like uh but it actually looks good like it looks good um yeah like especially comparing it especially like the 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 first issue or set of pages of number one to number three it's like whoa uh yes. it's certainly yeah you you've definitely picked up the polish of like you know any other comic that you might pick up off a shelf between how you learned about coloring your your general composition the art style itself as well as your storytelling yeah you've definitely gotten to the point where it's like oh yeah this is just like it's a comic it's not like oh i you know knowing you obviously it's an indie comic and stuff it's not published by boom or whoever but yeah. seeing like one and three it's like oh, okay this you know number one is definitely like a passion project it's a little more rough around the edges <laughs> and number three again i'll put up here to compare them you can definitely see that polish is severe like just it develops so much um, so yeah, you've clearly come a long way in a fairly short period of time. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, it has been um, really the volume one took a long time to go from start to finish. I did it. We discussed it on the first one we did where like I started in 2016. It was just sort of like a whatever. I'm, I'm drawing this thing to have something like an actual comic to sell at, at events. And so it didn't actually get the last um, 
18 pages drawn like it started in 2016 those last 18 pages of volume one were drawn in 2020 yeah and then four, since then four years yeah and then since then 200 other pages have been drawn <laughs> in less than a year <laughs> so yeah i i hope i'm getting better <laughs> <laughs> certainly man that is that it's it's been interesting to observe the comics world, especially smaller comic creators like yourself, um, like some of the other folks I've interviewed who, you know, have or had, have or had either way, a sort of like a day job where because of things like work from home, where perhaps, you know, like myself, you're able to sit at your desk at home and, and do your work and then you can go do whatever else. Um, COVID and, and lockdown, well horrible and I'm, I'm never gonna not say it's not because you know a lot of bad stuff has happened and it's been greatly inconvenient and, and rough on a lot of people and caused mental health issues i have found the creative community and especially in comics just because that's what i'm tuned into obviously has taken it and just run with it like there are so many new comics out there that never existed before and i think that like yourself just to be able to sit down and work has been fantastic yeah, it's, uh, for me, that part happened um, sort of to finish volume one and to begin volume two. Like, um, I really had a lot of time to do that. Uh, I say a lot of time. I had a bunch of, I had a baby, like a baby baby at that same time. Like, she was less than a year old. So uh, <laughs> there's a bit of work going on there, too. Just, but, just a little bit yeah you know, parenting <laughs> parenting yeah it takes us a lot of time if you like free time don't become a parent um but it's also awesome she's amazing and the other the other three kids in the house too are are, are great kids oh. too yeah um but uh that is i think of where that comes from what you're talking about like a lot of people have stories to tell that normally they w would just be telling their friends or they'd be talking uh, or they'd just be getting it out in little bits and pieces when they're at work or they're at school or whatever. And and when you're sort of trapped, yep. maybe not even with quotes, <laughs> uh, like you've got to do something. You've got to, people want to tell their stories to other people, right? Because that's who we are. And so, yeah, like I've seen a lot of really great things and a lot of really great um um like progress or advances or whatever you want to call it in people's art like um i'm friends with jerome cabanatan i know you've had him on here and like, like it's still it blows my mind he drew his first book with, with a mouse pad like a track yeah pad. like oh my god but if you look at his work now it's like light years ahead like he's progressed so much because he's had some time like he's got other things on the go too he's got two kids and he's got this maybe i shouldn't say that he's got kids and he's got the his uh, martial arts he does and everything so he's got other things going but i think he's got more time to do his art too and it's show oh, yeah um yeah so yeah i really i really do think that uh you see all these new comics and, and new things because people just want to tell their story and get it out there. That's just, yeah, it just feels true. Yeah. yeah. Now, you kind of already answered the question, mm -hmm. but I always like to ask, um, especially because you've just been flowing with so much story as of the last year and a bit, um, the question was going to be, are you working on anything else or anything new? And you've already mentioned a volume four. Yes. Um, when you read volume three, viewers out there, when you buy it and read it, uh, I have done the same kind of thing that I did volume two, where it's going to naturally lead to the next story. And I'd said to myself, self, like, take two months off and do other stuff. <laughs> So I sent uh, I sent uh, volume three for to get my copies to sell um, just on the last week, yeah, just a week ago. Oh. 
Um, so I really like it's such a slog. The end of like, oh, I'm done drawing, and then you do so much other stuff to try and make a book be print ready. It's insane. <laughs> Anyways, which I did something else. I'll tell you about at the same time. But anyways, so my plan was I'm not going to do any comics, any Omega Squad stuff for for at least at least one month, probably two. And then I was like, well, <laughs> what if I only do it? on my lunch break at work instead of in the morning when I get up at 5.30 or whatever until 7 and then also on my lunch break at work. Like I'll just be just on my lunch break. And so I've started, I, I my writing process is awkward. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I sort of wrote the first, the outline for volume four, like I don't know, like 14 different times just in my okay. head. Just like, oh, this is what's going to happen. Oh, this is, and then I, w I wouldn't write it down. And then obviously my thought is if the idea is not, if the idea is good enough, I'll remember it. And if it's not good enough, I'll forget it and I'll have to come up with something new. So I did that a few okay. times and then I wrote it down. And so I've actually done the thumbnails now or layouts, whatever you want to call it for the first um two issues so 18 pages and 16 pages whatever that is 34 pages wow and i've drawn two pages but i said oh, awesome. story first and then i was going to start drawing uh yeah so volume awesome. four is on the go uh i'm you know i i haven't set a deadline yet i've waited i didn't do that either with the volume three like once i'd sort of got into volume three i was like okay i can have this done by july and then i end up being a little bit early but so i don't have a deadline yet the other thing i did which ended up being a bit more of a project than i wanted it to be <laughs> okay uh was i i went you know i'm trying to you know broaden my readership and bring in some more people and so I found some websites that have uh, anthologies. Oh, okay. Hey, okay, like I got uh, some pages I can send you for an anthology. The thought being, I'll send the first twelve pages of volume one because it's got a pretty good oh. hook on it, right? Yeah. Um, you know, you meet the characters, and then there's the big ship, and they're like, "Oh my god!" Um, and so I was like, "Here you go, um, Tiny Power Comics," was the website. Like, look at these twelve pages, and he's like geez man this is pretty rough i'm like yeah it was six five years ago of course it's rough and he's like well if you want to be in this anthology mm -hmm. clean it up okay you know, give it a, a facelift and so <laughs> and, and so the first 12 pages of volume one i do actually now have in a current style Oh, cool! Yeah, All right. They're not quite because I, I I went over my inks from Volume One digitally, so it's not completely new. I fixed a couple of the drawings that were a little wonky, but uh, the panels aren't so just. <laughs> I hate using a ruler. So. You, you cleaned it up a little bit. That's all. You 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 tidied. You shifted. You you put some polish on it. You made yeah. it look good. Um, and so I've I've done that. So Tiny Power Comics, oh, wow. it's on their website. Okay. Well, make sure we have links to it and everything. That's awesome. Good for you. Yeah. I'll send you. I'll send you twelve pages. It looks pretty good. All right. I'm in. <laughs> um, and, and so yeah. And so those those were the two projects. Uh, well, one is is done because it's up on their website it'll be in their anthology whenever they get four more people to submit so if you're looking to have your book in an anthology tiny power comics submit it and then we'll be published together in an anthology book um, that, folks four people yeah and then uh, and then like i say volume four is on the way in process the man who never stops working that's fantastic it's fun it's it's what i do to relax like i don't um i get up at like sometimes at like five in the morning five thirty, and uh if oh you've got my instagram sometimes there's pictures of sunrise yeah <laughs> i make comics because i like i just I, that's when i wake up and i don't bother like 
trying to go back to sleep. So I just get up and I sit at the table and I and I draw and it's like my like time to just be by myself and do what I want to do. And drawing comics is fun and productive, so that's what I do. That it is. I, I am curious because uh, clearly a- anyone who's gonna wake up as early as that and then just jump on and start making comics out of passion. Um, how far or how long I should say did you go? in your 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 two month break before you started drawing omega sweat stuff was it was it a whole month did you make it or was it less no no <laughs> um because one of the things i did was uh like if you buy the volume three um like i'm gonna send you a bookmark i'm gonna send you um oh. a sketch card or whatever along with your order right and so i was like well i better have a few of those ready to go so Ah, I'm on my break, okay. but I'm gonna draw these bookmarks, and then like, and yeah, like, like this. Nice. There you go. And so it's like Jago. Here's some I prepared earlier. Love it. It's yeah, fantastic. Uh, I'll, I'll show you. He's been on my Instagram, so it's not too much of a spoiler. But there's love the, it. Like the Mando, Oscar the Grouch. That's in Volume Three. Yes, you like Sesame Street. Volume Three is for you. <laughs> Absolutely, I, I love that. By the way, the, the the two new new characters you introduced um, that were references to that, or oh, it was fantastic. <laughs> I Thanks. again, folks. Yeah, uh, the folks out there. Uh, Omega Squad is a uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a love letter to like pop culture star wars um 80s 90s cartoons just everything if if you're into pop culture and stuff just check this comic out it's omega squad it's fantastic thanks yeah 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 Yeah. now let's talk about getting it so we've talked a lot about the comic and how you make it and all this good stuff folks want to read it chris how can people get your book what's the the best way the best way for you to get my book is to come to my Instagram, so uh, Instagram.com, uh, Chris underscore Barnes underscore Art. Many people don't go to Instagram on their web browser. I don't know why I said Instagram.com. Go into your app <laughs> at Chris underscore Barnes underscore Art. That's my handle on Instagram, and in my bio is the order form for buying the book, or books, or books and extra stuff um yeah that's the easiest way to get it hands down um it's it's i shouldn't maybe it's not the easiest but it's the best way to get it the easiest way is on amazon. you go on amazon you buy the book you don't get it signed <laughs> you don't get um, a person drawn on your envelope you don't right get a little goodie tucked into the front cover of your book yes well, yes, I have, I believe, prints from you. I have all sorts of wonderful things tucked away in my collection here. Yeah. Yes. Oh, 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 oh. One other thing I did. So in these books, right, um, you open it up like this. Oops. I know how to open books. <laughs> <laughs> and You've been making so them so long, this... you forgot. <laughs> yeah. You have this page, right, and it's sort of the credits page. And I've drawn, in this yeah. book, I've drawn a little Ania there in the corner. And this side is blank. And uh, a couple of people, when they bought the first book the first time around, I tried to draw on this white inside of the cover. Oh, and it was a little bit. Like that. Yeah, like that. And I was like, yeah, it's pretty good. But I don't want to, it's hard to not like bend the cover while you do that. So what I did, what I have done with all my new orders of all the books, because I changed volume one a little bit, a tiny, tiny bit or it's like the second edition now is this page here instead of being like the credits page mm-hmm. is just black oh okay yeah so i can get the gold sharpie and i can get the silver sharpie or whatever and i can draw a picture on the all black oh, front page that'll look, that'll look so good because that'll be the first thing when, when you open up your book you got a nice hand drawn by the creator yeah. character shot whatever it might be nice exactly so every book that comes from me will have that in it 
Um, so that's why you should order from me. Uh, yeah, so Instagram, Chris Barnes Art, and then in my bio is the order form. Beautiful. That's the best way to get my book. Awesome. Yeah. Now, uh, is there anything else you want to cover about the book? Is there anything else I want to cover about the book? Um, I just, I really want to, like, you hit the ball pretty hard on, like, it's a love letter to pop culture, and there's all sorts of references in there. And I I, uh, I had a, quite a few in the first volume, and I backed off a little bit on it in the, in the second volume, and I really put the hammer down in this one. There's... Yeah. There's guys from Sesame Street in there, uh, a certain scientist from a, oh. their cartoon with a lot of burping. I yeah. caught that real quick little thing. I was like, ah! <laughs> yeah, he sort of drives by in there. Um, there's two characters who run a shop that are in there as from request of my dad. Uh, from right on SCTV. If uh, if you've been someone who's been watching uh, Shit's Creek. Eugene Levy is one of them. Oh, okay. And uh, so they're in there. So I've got something in there. If you're like older than 40, there's even a <laughs> pop culture reference for you in there. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, and it, it was, it's a lot of fun. And it's, um, I, I really hope people enjoy it and um, buy the book and give me feedback. and. And uh, maybe like, oh, you should have this guy in your next book. I'm like, hmm. okay, I'll put him in. So yeah, you heard it here. Make suggestions. So yeah, make, wh whichever character you want to see appear in Chris's books next, Omega Squad Volume Four. Heck, it might be five. The way this guy works, <laughs> submit it though. Let him know. Yeah, that'd be great. Love it. Uh, well. I always like to, to end my interviews, uh, typically speaking on two questions. One we just kind of covered. So the last one is, Chris, at the moment, what is it that when you can, when you're not working so crazily, uh, what are you reading right now? I'm actually reading The Martian right now. Um, like, so there's the movie. Like the one right? that they, they made. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I got the book and I'm reading that. Uh, and when I say reading, I mean listening to because that's how I do books. That's how I do word books now. I listen to them in the car. Audible, I assume? Audible, yeah. Yeah. Good service. Is 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 the Martian anything like the movie or is it like totally different or Oh, it, it's it's been a while since I saw the movie. As but it seems pretty similar. Like uh it's it's good. It's a good book. It's a good movie. It's a good oh. book. Yeah. Uh it's funny cuz the book is done all as um, like log entries. Oh. Like uh, they don't call it a day, they call it soul. So, like, soul 42, I did this and this and this and this. Soul 58. Oh, this thing happened to me today, and blah, 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 blah. Um, it's it's oh. really good. It's a good book. If That's you haven't seen the movie, cool. and if you, or if you hadn't listened to or read the book, you should do it. It's a good book. Well, here you go. Yeah. And that'll be uh, The Martian. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. Well, Chris, absolutely thank you so much for coming on the show and talking about Omega Squad 3 Biomes. Uh, it's always a pleasure. Uh, and yeah, we look forward to seeing what comes next in Volume 4. Yeah, awesome. Thanks so much for having me. This is great.